Hello and welcome. Thanks so much for coming in, Monica. This is awesome. This is my pleasure. I love the work that you do and that you uh, are involved with the community with all this kind of work and I'm honored to be a part of it. Yay. So um, I am Laura Brody. I'm the founder and primary curator for Opulent Mobility. I am a middle-aged uh, Caucasian woman with brown hair in front of a very full bookshelf with some art and little figurines and plaster casts of my foot. Monica, welcome. Hi. I'm Monica Marks. Um, I am also a middle-aged, I don't know, it's 58 middle-aged, I'm just going to say it is. Also Caucasian, also wearing kind of a burgundy red top. <laughs> we plan, didn't plan this. And my background is my studio with some letterpress boxes with lots of little doodads and a bookcase with lots of books and plastic boxes of supplies. Nice. And it says Monica in the back? Yes. What one of, I think the A fell off or got oh. <laughs> Yeah, that part's not camera ready, but I'm always taking things off and putting like if there's an A up there that I'm thinking I can use it for this piece, I'm going to use it for this piece. <laughs> How did you find out about opulent mobility? Because we've been in like similar um, art circles, at least virtually for a while. I believe it was through hanging around the makery. And uh, I had actually seen couple years ago for opulent mobility I'd seen the call for art okay. and um that was before I knew you and I was like oh that would be so cool to do and I just never got my act together and then I saw it again oh that would be so cool to do and then I came into the makery and I saw your work and I met you and I was like okay well now I have to <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was interested in when I first saw the call I just um I was too involved in other things, probably caretaking. Not surprising because caretaking will take up all your brain. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us about your work? Because I mean, you do such beautiful assemblage work that's really thoughtful and layered and so much detail. Thank you so much. Um, I like to do work that you can't just look at once and get it, that you need to linger or revisit. Um, I'm fascinated with discarded objects. And <clears throat> I'm also fascinated, uh, my original fascination and love and connection is to hidden disabilities. And sometimes people with disabilities to me also feel, we feel discarded. So, um, and especially with the pandemic. So it's it strengthened my connection to discarded objects and wanting to give them a new life and a new purpose and either leave them as they actually are or, um, polish them up a little bit, you know, to transform them. And then I also love sculpture. Uh, so I'm doing a little more sculpture, but I will try to combine the found objects with the sculpture as like the bases or uh, as a part of it. So that's, um, but then I also like painting, but I usually use found objects in my paintings. Mm. So um, I'm a little bit all over the place, but, uh, but definitely assemblage is, I think what makes my heart beat faster and uh, using found and discarded objects also does. Something I really love about that part of what I do is looking at everything as being buried treasure. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, I can, it can all speak to you and those things people overlook can be sometimes the most important stuff. So true in so many, that's a great metaphor in so many ways. Do you find that during the pandemic things changed for you artistically? They did actually, okay. but for me in a good way, I was the, the job I was in at the time, I had stopped doing art for 10 years. Oh, wow. I had, I was doing nothing. Um, and oh, wow. I was involved in my job. I was the cl clinical director at a special education school that my family owned and operated. And we were all involved. My mom was the you know, head of the transportation department. My sister was, you know, the director of the school and I was the clinical director taking care of all the mental health needs and, and uh, supervising all the therapists that worked there. And uh, as someone who's quite an empath, it really drained me every day and there was no space for art. I had had the studio for like uh, maybe a year or so before the pandemic, it was built in our backyard. And when we went to uh, learning online, 
this was my space, my private space. So I was doing my work from this room and I was thinking, well, while, while I'm here, I could, I could work on things while <laughs> I'm in a meeting or, you know, do things that, um, that were artistic. And I realized that I had missed it so much. So I was a little rusty, but then I just did things for myself. And I uh, worked, uh, Christine Shoemaker with Shoebox has the um, call and response art. And that was my first dipping my toes back into art. And um, Dallas Frank was my, um, my partner and I, I didn't know Dallas yet. And uh, I got to know her through that and it just freed me up. And that by the time we were going back, I realized I can't let art go again. It's too, it's too important to me. It's too much who I am that I had denied for so long. It's almost like my art career was the, the object I had to find again. It was discarded and I found it. So um, that's how I got back into it. And so the pandemic for me, for I can give you a hundred reasons why it wasn't good. Um, but the one, <laughs> like 99 reasons why it was awful but one reason was it brought me the opportunity and the space to return to art. That's amazing. I'm so glad for you. And what a great thing to find again. Yes. Yeah. I'm very grateful. And so now this is my life. I wanted to share the piece that you were doing, if you don't mind, the what? lovely piece for the show. This is something you did with your family, right? Yes. Um, my, my daughter didn't have time, but she gave like input from the side, but the, the real worker bees in this, uh, my son and my husband. So Alex Marks and Todd Marks worked with me on this because I had the, the idea and the design, but they are the ones that are good at the, the hands-on figuring out how to attach things and, you know, how to spray paint things without getting overspray on everything. Cause I'm, I'm terrible at that kind of, you know, exacting. When people say, I can't be an artist, I can't even draw a straight line. I can't also, I cannot draw a straight line. I can't do anything very precise. <laughs> so, um, so yes, they were my helpers and they were helping come up with ideas. And um, I, so it's a combination uh, of all of us. It's a community, pro family community project. Interestingly, the wheelchair itself is a found object. It was on the curb of a, of a street. Um, it had a big sign on it that said free. And I was driving right by and it was like, I've been, I, I had a little walker cane, but I really, my dream was to work on a, a wheelchair. So um, that and, and a, the other objects on it are all found objects. That is so neat. I'm assuming that's fabric or did you paint the seat, the seat cover? No, that is that is fabric. Um, I made a, a a pillow cover that you tuck in, and I'm not a great sewer. You know, I would have liked to have been a little form fitting, and I would have liked to the the pillow to slide in in one side or the, rather than I did it. But I did it. I was proud of myself. It it keeps closed. It's there. And then the arms, you know, I just um, here my husband and son help take off the parts. I covered it in fabric, they put it back on. But I, I knew I wanted it to be clearly a steampunk theme. And uh, the the umbrella was, um, I got at a store for estate sales and it's it's broken. The, whole, the part you hold, the handle only goes halfway down. So that's why also it's attached to something that you can move. I wanted it to make it functional, something that I or someone else could also use. Um, I. And I have some physical issues with my back and, uh, and some issues with my knees. And I have always loved dressing in costumes. And I was a cosplayer with my son and we would go to WonderCon, which became LA Comic-Con and we went to Kamikaze. He introduced me to steampunk when he was in high school. And I, I love Victorian, the Victorian era, and I love science fiction. So finding out that Victorian science fiction is a thing of, um, you know, steam powered uh, items and, uh, you know, the, the gears and all that. And I, would th I was thinking that if I were to do a con now, 
I would not be able to walk the whole time. I recently went to Disneyland for um, a couple events. The past three times I've been to Disneyland, I have had to rent a wheelchair because I can't, I can't do anything too long. I can't sit too long. I can't stand too long. I can't walk too long. Um, and I was grateful for that. But I was thinking if I were to go back and dress in my steampunk garb, I would like to have a wheelchair that went with it as an extension of my costume. It seemed like the perfect opportunity to be able to pull that off. And um, I do have it for sale because if somebody else loves steampunk and they need a wheelchair, unfortunately, it's, it's only the kind you push. But um, again, it was free. So, um, <laughs> oh, and I added, so I, I got that little suitcase, uh, that mini suitcase that comes out of the back so you could keep stuff in it also and then I decorated and painted and embellished it um so again it is practical and there is enough room for someone to push it um from the back so I made sure of that and the the um umbrella is adjustable because if you are going to an outdoor event you know so it was really my um kind of combining my physical issues right now or other people's physical issues that they would need a wheelchair and my love of cosplay and steampunk. What a fun idea and what a great choice. I mean, yeah, because a lot of people don't necessarily recognize that that can come and go, that mobility can come and go in that way. Yes. So what is the little speaker? Hubcap? What is that? It's like three or four different things. Um, Neat. The, the original piece it's on a, a pole and I'm trying to remember, oh, it was something, honestly, I do not remember. I will have to get back to you. It was something very unique and old and then um, painted it and added things to it. So it would look like a little steam rocket. It it's all good. No, I'm just doing that because when I'm doing the descriptions for these for the website, it is a speaker a vent cap i don't know but, but it's like a thing a thing that's sort of coppery red that's that's on the back a plunger type like a metal <laughs> plunger or something <laughs> or maybe it, yeah it's it's metal and then yeah you have handle someone watching this is going to be like it's a da -da 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 -da. why don't you yeah of course of course they're gonna know but that's what this is that's what the internet is for <laughs> so they will help us all if you know out there in the world of the webs tell us what these pieces are it's a really fun thing to add on to um i actually know a bunch of people who are doing things to customize and personalize their stuff but figuring out things that work depending on what your capacity is you know what your dexterity is it can make a big difference but there's some really good tapes and the light up push rooms are pretty amazing too mm. Nice, nice, nice. Also a possibility for future, if that's ever something you want to consider, a little lighting. A little light. This is funny. My husband always wants to add lighting to things. and I. <laughs> so it's perfect. So, yes. And so tell us what else you've got on the horizon. It sounds like you've got some good plans coming up. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, so Yay. Shoebox Projects with Christine Shoemaker is uh, granting me a, a small solo show at the brewery in Christine's space. Um, we are only officially allowed to invite friends and family. So if you're hearing this or watching this, you are my friend. There you go. There you go. That, that's in January. Yes. Yes. In case, so in case people don't know, if you're from out of town, Christine Schumacher has been doing these things at the space called the brewery, which is not actually a brewery but it is a huge arts complex in downtown LA. Although originally it was- It, it was, was originally a brewery. It's and there good. are breweries nearby, but it is not actually a brewery. It is not. But no, that's really cool. How long had you been working with Christine? Well, after I did the call and response, I, I called her up and I said, all right, what's this? Give me the deal. What's, <laughs> a, what's the skinny on this? What's the skinny on working with you? And it sounded like exactly what I needed for the support and kind of the push um, yeah. to, to get me to where I want to go. And um, I, I just, I value that relationship uh, both personally and professionally. 
Oh, it's awesome. Because I, I hadn't realized that you had been out of the art world for that long. And it can make a really big difference. Yeah, it's interesting when Facebook memories comes up. And I just saw one from 2008. Because 2009 was the last time I, I was in a show and was doing art. And I was like, oh, I got in a show and la, 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 la. And at that point, I thought like the art world was was my oyster in front of me. And uh, yeah, so from 2000, 2009 to 2019, um, I, I didn't do anything. Wow. I know that for eight years I'd been doing um, costume work and, uh, and that all of my art was sort of in service of other people. And it took a while to just say, you know what? Nope, that I actually have things I really want to do. That makes sense. And that's what I also now it's interesting. I'm, I'm in that sandwich generation where um, I'm still helping and supporting my husband and I, I don't want to sound like I'm all by myself because my husband is a wonderful help. Um, but between our children and our aging parents, um, because both my kids have certain needs, different needs, but definitely special in their own rights. They're very special to me. And, um, and his, his father, my husband's father passed away a couple of years ago. His mother is mm. aging. my parents, you know, my stepdad is aging. And so trying to assert myself to say, I need this time to do art rather than take you to an appointment. It's uh kids need me. I'm like, here I am too. So um, it's, it's an interesting time to find my own space. And to start sometimes having to demand your own space. And that can be a real issue, especially as you know, being a caretaker and being a mom to realize that if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else very well. You know that theoretically, and as a clinical director, I would tell that to other people all the time. <laughs> And yet, somehow, we're immune. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chronically responsible. <laughs> oh, that's good. I need a mug. That's <laughs> right. That's, yeah, that sometimes it's like, you know what? Maybe it'd be a good time just to be a little selfish. It's not so wrong. Yes. And that's what I'm trying to role model for other people. But somehow I... It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it takes practice. You'll get it. Yeah. 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 I'm just really glad that you're doing more work because it feels like it's been so th thoughtful and caring and that you love it so much. I think it comes through in all your pieces. Thank you. I, I do. It, it feels when I'm doing art, it feels like I'm doing what I was always meant to, to do. Um, That's so good. I was one of those that, you know, from a very young age, um, I was always drawing and coloring and, and building and uh you know making things um my mom was very creative and you know she would do lots of art projects with me and and in middle school we did in the first day of art class we had to draw where we wanted what we wanted to do when we grew up i drew a building with a big sign on top and on the sign on the sign it said what my, my last name at the time was rickler hallmark and rickler <laughs> i wanted i wanted to draw greeting cards um, and, and of course, you know, if I'm going to dream, I was also owner, part owner or something. So that was, it was, I think 12 when I did that. So I have always known that somewhere in the art world, that is where I would be. I think that you're, you're finding your home very beautifully. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yay. I'm just so glad we actually got to, to really meet. Also the makery, by the way, is this, uh, studio art space and gallery where opulent mobility will be held this year. So how can people find you on the uh, webs? On the, on the interwebs? Um, well, it's pretty easy. So my name is Monica Marks and all my social media and my website, which needs to be updated, sorry. Um, <laughs> by the time this airs, you'll be like, it looks great. So, <laughs> It'll be fabulous. Um, I don't know what she's talking about. Um, Monica Marks Art. So my website, monicamarksart.com. My email is monica at monicamarksart.com. Um, both Instagram and Facebook. If you remember Monica Marks Art, you could find me pretty much anywhere. It's all good. Hey, thank you so much. This is amazing. I'm really glad we got this chance to talk. Thank you. Me too. This was great.